Welcome to Sports Science Tutor. This is an exclusive SPSS tutorial series brought to you by Sports Science Tutor. For the rest of this series, please visit sportsciencetutor.com slash SPSS. Regression analysis. In regression, we're essentially using the value uh, we're essentially using the value of one variable in order to predict the value of another variable. We can perform multiple regression, whereby we're using the values of several different variables in order to predict something else. But I think we should keep things pretty simple here by sticking to just one uh, dependent variable and one independent variable. And specifically, we're going to look at how we can use squat strength, strength in the back squat exercise, depicted here as squat one RM or squat one repetition maximum. Uh, we'll look at how we can use that value to predict an individual's level of performance in the 100 meter sprint, which is depicted here as sprint time. Now it's important to realize that the accuracy of this prediction is going to depend on the strength of the correlation between these two variables. And so we do need this data uh, because this is going to enable us to see previous instances of how squat strength relates to sprint performance. First off, that's going to enable us to decide whether or not the level of correlation is actually sufficient for us to make meaningful predictions for people whose level of sprint performance we don't actually know. And secondly, this will um, we need to use this data in order to run an analysis in SPSS uh, that's going to give us the information we need to construct a regression equation. So the regression equation is what's actually used to predict the value of one variable uh, from the known value of another variable. And the regression equation is strict, structured as such, y equals bx plus a. So y is the value of the variable being predicted, so that's sprint performance in this instance. B is the slope of the line, we'll come to that later. X is the value of the known variable, so in this instance X will be squat strength or squat one repetition maximum, and A is the Y intercept. Again, we'll come back to this. Um, but in order to construct this equation so that we can begin to make predictions, we need to use the existing data that we have in order to run a, a regression analysis on SPSS. Um, that's going to provide us with the values for B, the slope of the line, and A, the y-intercept, which we can then place into this regression equation, y equals bx plus A. And then so long as we uh, know an individual squat one repetition maximum score, we can use this equation to predict their level of performance in the 100 meter sprint. So if we go back to the SPSS data editor now, as I've already inputted my data here, I can now actually run the regression analysis by clicking on analyze, clicking or selecting regression and then as you can see there are a number of different types of regression that I can choose from and the one that I actually want to choose is going to depend on the nature of the relationship between squat strength and sprint performance and in order to establish that the nature of that relationship it's actually quite useful to take a step back and, re and graph the data. So if I deselect analyze and I go over to graphs, I'm going to select legacy dialogues and then I'm going to go down to scatter slash dot and here I'm going to select on simple scatter. I'm going to click on define and uh, 100 meter sprint time is already in this y-axis box. Uh, x-axis box already has back, back squats uh, one rep max in there but if if they weren't already in there then you can just highlight them and then use these arrows to move the values back and forth but they're already in place so I'll just click OK and as we can see from this graph in the output now this is depicting a pretty linear relationship and so the type of regression analysis I'm going to want to perform is a linear regression. But if we had more of a curvy linear relationship being depicted here or a U-shaped relationship, then obviously I'd want to perform a different type of regression analysis. If I close that now, I won't bother saving that for the time being. And now I go back to 
analyze, go to regression, and now I know that I want to perform a linear regression. So I'll click on linear regression here. Again, my dependent value, uh, dependent box already has 100 meter sprint time in there. My independent box has back squat one rep max already selected, but if they weren't already selected, I could use these um, arrows and highlight them to move them back and forth as so. So all I need to do now is click OK and I receive my output. So now that we have our SPS output, we need to understand what information is useful and what can be ignored. So if we first take a look at the model summary box here, we have R, which is the correlation coefficient, and we have a value of 0.948, which is actually a very strong correlation, which is good, uh, because as we mentioned before, we want a strong correlation in order to make meaningful predictions. Um, the next value is R square, and this is the square of the correlation coefficient and can also be used as an indicator of how well the regression equation fits the data. And a number closer to one is going to represent a better fit. So that's very close to one, and so we're quite happy with that uh, as an indicator that um, uh, we're going to be able to perform meaningful and useful predictions. And finally, we've got the standard error of estimate here, which is a measure of variability and kind of tells us how much inaccuracy we're going to have in our predictions. And so really what we're looking for here is a small number compared to with R and R square, where we're looking for larger numbers, as close to one as possible in those instances. If we now move down to the coefficients box, this is where we get the crucial information that we need in order to actually construct the regression equation. So under unstandardized coefficients, uh, the value for constant here is our y-intercept. So the y-intercept being the supposed value for the independent variable when the van value for the dependent variable is zero. And the value immediately below this um, represents the slope of the line, which tells us how much the dependent variable is expected to increase by as we see increases in the independent variable. So having obtained these two uh, values, all we actually need to do now is plug these numbers into our regression equation, and then we can start making predictions.